a lot of enterprise applications are still running on Spring Boot. If you don't know internals and complexities around databases, you are going to get very hard time working as a full-time software engineer. Try to spend more time in writing actual raw queries. You will find at least 30 to 40% of Java developers who are still not very comfortable with them. Understand the lambdas in Java. This is going to take you quite far. Look at these concepts, try to practically implement them with a small project and see how do they actually work. Building scalable enterprise level applications and learning Spring Boot. These are two things that are definitely going to go hand in hand even in the upcoming year 2026. A lot of enterprise applications are still running on Spring Boot because of the fact that it provides good scalability, maintainability and reusability altogether. And if you're somebody who wants to actually start Spring Boot from scratch, here are some of the quick tips that I would like to provide you that I will also follow myself in case I am learning Spring Boot for the very first time in 2026. These are the things that I believe are few fundamentals that are going to go very long way with you in case you are somebody who is looking for building a career in backend development. So without any further ado, let's just start and let's see how would I learn Spring Boot in 2026 for the very first time. So before moving forward in the video, if you're somebody who is actually looking to learn Spring Boot and want to develop a career in backend development in Java, then you are at the absolutely right place. So now we have actually launched the second iteration of our Spring Boot cohort, where we are going to talk about a lot of interesting backend development topics in Spring Boot, right from the beginner level to the very advanced level. We're going to start with basics of what is a build system. We'll start learning about what are basics of databases, what are basics of Spring Boot, and slowly and steadily we'll move to advanced topics like how you can actually implement distributed transactions using the Saga design pattern, be it the choreography Saga or the orchestration Saga. We are going to talk about the design aspects of some of the very interesting projects, including making a distributed wallet, including making an Airbnb based backend booking system. We are going to talk about how you can actually play around with geospatial indexes and how you can make an Uber booking application altogether and whatnot. There's going to be a lot of important topics that are very frequently used in day-to-day -day backend engineering job, which will actually help you to get the idea of what exactly it looks like to develop these kind of like scalable applications. So if you want to turn up your portfolio into an absolute Spring Boot beast, then do check out the link in the description section below and use this coupon code to get maximum discount off on the cohort. And I'm really excited for you to join the cohort as well. So let's just resume back to the video. Now, before you take a deep dive and jump into any framework, not just Spring Boot, I would highly recommend you to learn two important things. First is databases. If you don't know internals and complexities around databases, you are going to get very hard time working as a full-time software engineer. Trust me on this fact, with my last past six years of experience around the fact that how exactly scalable systems are built, Database is one of those factors which is, which is something where you will spend most of your time. Understanding how data modeling works, how you are going to model new database structures, how exactly you can query database efficiently, how you can query, in, um, I would say, tables efficiently, how you can make sure that you are able to migrate your database, how exactly migrations work, right? how indexes work. All of these things are very, very important. And understanding of the fact that how exactly asset compliance work, how exactly transactions work, right? How exactly isolation level works. This actually makes sure that you think from the first principle, right? So I would say, take a deep dive into databases. Even if it takes a few more weeks to understand, try to spend more time in writing actual raw queries, looking into database structures and understanding them. The second most important prerequisite is going to be your language. And in our case, it's going to be Java. I would say have a basic Java understanding with you, but few things are definitely a must have nowadays if you are going to work with Spring Boot. So Java released their stream API and to be very honest, you will find at least 30 to 40% of Java developers who are still not very comfortable with them. But once you get a hang of how Java stream APIs actually work, you will see that your code is very, very short and you are having a very good time in writing very complex piece of logic. 
right so understand the streams api understand the lambdas in java this is going to take you quite far and help you understand very complex piece of code in spring boot very easily now the moment you will be introduced to a spring boot code base and you will start talking to somebody there will be a term called as dependency injection that will be thrown at you like in every 5 minutes so it would be better that you understand dependency injection well and i would like to emphasize on the fact that if you want to understand dependency injection you need to understand dependency inversion as well which is one of the five solid principle and that makes sense that you understand all the five solid principle because if you see good scalable java projects all of them very efficiently follow solid principle so learn solid principles and then try to understand what is dependency injection in the world of spring boot the dependency injection will work like a magic to you but try to set up a project where things don't work like magic and you have to manually do dependency injection see how exactly you would do things all together then later the concepts of dependency injection auto wiring constructor injection right having the concepts of bean everything will start making more sense if you have tried everything yourself once so look at these concept try to practically implement them with a small project and see how do they actually work now i believe if you are ready with the previous two parts this is a good time to actually start booting a brand new spring boot project and i would say just go head on and try to make a very small maybe like a to do like application try to understand small small annotations like how exactly rest controllers work right how exactly why do you have to give annotations like services components right how exactly this complete annotation chaos works inside spring boot you will be having questions around the fact that okay how does it work for a moment try to understand that okay this is something that is provided by spring boot and we have to build on top of this that's the baseline that you have to understand that spring boot is going to do a lot of things for you you don't need to like bang your head on the wall that why spring boot does and how it does you have to figure out what do you want to do so start understanding these annotations around rest controllers how exactly get mapping put mapping post mapping is going to give you a certain set of apis try to figure out what is response entity and how exactly you can use to return a particular response and try to take a deep dive into application dot properties what kind of different different properties you can at least initially set like the server port and maybe the project name etc this is going to at least get you started with a basic structure before you actually move ahead to more in interesting concepts now i would say hands on try to learn about rest apis see how exactly rest apis work what is rest apis why do you need them what are some alternatives just maybe take a, a quick uh, walk around and then try to implement rest apis the moment you know how exactly rest apis work why do you need a json structure things will start making more sense and a lot of annotations like rest controller get mapping put mapping post mapping all of these mapping based annotations will also start making sense at this point of time it would be really great if you try to understand a few internals of spring boot that how exactly spring boot maps an incoming api request to the corresponding controller method i would say let me know in the comment section if you know the answer of this question it will help other people as well and then start building some basic set of apis a simple to do project is also going to be enough try to learn about what are query params what are what is a request body how you can pass a request body how you can pass a query param how you can pass a url param learn about all of these concepts and start building small small apis all together now all the knowledge of databases that you got early this is a good time to start integrating them but with the magic of spring so start learning about spring data jpa how exactly orms work what are repository why do you need a repository it's something called as a repository pattern that you can try to understand and then make sure that the to do api let's say you that you were making you are able to actually query real database put real data inside your database query that data and try to use these orm functions see how with the magic of spring boot you will be able to at least fire a lot of basic queries directly and also try to understand if let's say at any point of time you have to fire a custom query how exactly the at the rate query annotation works right how you can write the repository methods in the interface why it is actually an interface like that's an interesting question that you are making a lot of classes like a controller class a service class but why you are making repositories an interface what's going on behind the scenes try to take a deep dive because now you know good fundamentals of databases so this part will also start making a lot of sense to you once you have a basic ecosystem running as an api in your machine i would say start gearing up for a few more interesting concept 
learn about authentication. See how Spring Security does a lot of job of authentication out of the box for you. Try to learn about testing, how you can write some simple unit tests in the world of Spring Boot. This is going to help you a lot if you are going to join a big tech giant where testing is very, very heavily focused. Try to see how you can boot up your complete project inside a Docker container, how you can dockerize the complete setup that will help you to understand more modern development workflows. And the moment you start doing all of this, trust me on the fact that you will eventually learn about more concepts, right? It's that when you start going deep into a stack, you will yourself realize there is more things to learn and step by step sequentially, you will be able to follow along a lot of things. So this would be something that I would definitely do in this particular order if I would start learning Spring Boot in 2026. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below if you feel that there is something even more important that is very important for somebody to learn as a beginner in Spring Boot. That being said, let's wrap this particular video here. We are going to meet soon in the next set of videos where we are going to talk about a lot of more interesting things regarding tech and career. Till then, take care. Bye-bye. I'm Sanket Singh, signing off.